so in this segment we are going to see how we can uh, use functions some uh, program defined function to generate random number okay so a random number means actually like you want to generate a number uh, it's uh, it has to be completely random okay so c++ has some function and uh, we are going to use uh, which function we can use to generate random numbers so this is the library we have to include all right so with io stream we are going to now include cstd lib okay so this is one going to include uh, to use a function rand function so if you call a rand function means like integer i equals to rand function then you uh, you can see the output by printing the value of i all right so you will see that the value will be completely random and this value uh, will be like somehow a big number okay so for example say for example here you can see that i am uh, calling the rand function all right integer i and the output is just a larger number okay it's just a random number so uh, what we can do actually we, we can actually scale and shift the number so for example i want to generate a random number from 1 to 10 okay so i may have a program where i have to generate a random number from 1 to 10 for example let's see um, you are playing a game okay you have a dice so you have a dice where you have six side okay so you want to roll the dice and you want to generate the uh, dice you want to generate a number randomly so in that case e, obviously you, you will want to generate a number from one to six right so if you want to generate a number from one to n we can do that but you can see here the number is large like a big number okay so how we can make sure that a random number will be from some number to some number i mean within a range we can do that just using some tricks like using modulus operator okay say for example for example here so i'm generating a random number i'm calling the rand function then i am uh, more using the remainder of a remainder operator operator with six okay so that means we know any value if we divide it and the remainder will be remainder of six is going to be any value between zero to five okay so any value if we do the remainder with a number this value is going to be from zero to five okay and then we are adding plus one that means this value this value of i is going to be any number from one to six okay so if i want to generate a random number from one to ten okay so that means what i have to do i have to call the rand function do the using the modulus operator with 10 so this is going to give me a value from 0 to 9 all right then if i add plus 1 that means with this value 1 will be added okay so it will be 1 to 10 okay so let's try that so i can do 10 plus one all right so now let's run that you can see the value is now four okay so here uh, uh, here we are running the program you can see uh, we're running the program this one we have to include okay this one actually contains the function prototype for rand okay so as we are using rand function we have to include the library where the rand function is defined so this is going to print a number from uh, this is going to generate a random number from one to six and here i am using a for loop i mean I, i'm running a dice like 20 times okay and i'll generate random number 20 times so this function this is a function which is going to uh, set a width okay so for example i am going to print a number uh, so for that number it will set the width width of a number okay and the width will be 10 so that's how you can see uh, it will print 
it will print the number with uh, uh, 10 width okay so it just uh, to format the output all right and if the number is divisible by 5 then i'm going to print the output in the new line so that's how actually i'm printing the output new line i mean just in each line i'm printing only five output and you can see that all the numbers are from 0 to 10. all right so um So here is another example when uh, actually what actually we are doing we are uh, um, uh, we are actually simulating a rolling of dice but here we are doing 6000 time okay 6000 time then what actually we want to do we want to count how many times we got each of the number for example like if I mean uh, one was uh, printed uh, like we generated number one uh, this time okay 1000 time we generated 1003 times we generated number two 1017 times like that okay so all the uh, programming concept we already know so far i'm sure you can actually go over the code and you will understand how we are doing that okay so we are running uh, the for loop all right so we are running the for loop 6000 times and each time we will generate the number so um, as this is a dice the number will be from one to six okay now we are counting i mean i mean how many times we got each side so how many times we got one how many times we got two three like that okay and as we said the set w is going to set the width 13 with 13 uh, length okay 13 width so it, this is going to be used just to format our output okay you can see we are printing our output like in a tabular format okay so by using this uh, by using some of the function like set w you can uh, print your output like much more neat clean in tabular format So if we call the random function repeatedly, it will give us the same sequence number. Okay. So what we can do actually different if we want to get a different random sequence, we have to provide a seed value. A seed value means like we're give, giving a starting point from where random number will start in that sequence. Okay. So if the seed value is same, uh, in that case, it will give the random number in the same sequence but if we change the seed number seed value in that case always the random number starting point will be different okay so in that case actually if we want to generate a random number um, uh, if we want the random number generator to give us always a different sequence of random number in that case we can use a function srand okay and the srand function is going to take a parameter seed value so this seed value we are going to give a starting point to generate a random number okay so this library we are going to need that and we are going to use srand function before the rand function okay first we are going to initialize a seed value then we are going to use the rand function okay then the rand function is going to use this seed value as a starting point now as we said that the same seed is going to give the same sequence so we'll start uh, we'll try uh, to use different seed number uh, okay we'll try to use always the different seed number okay so here uh, is the example here we are using the seed value as an input okay so we'll first uh, assign the seed value using srand function then we are going to we can use that uh, and that the seed value will be used by the rand function to as a starting point okay so with different seed value our random number uh, is going to be a uh, random number will look different okay so you can see that if the seed number is same all right the random number sequences are also same so six one four six two six one four six two okay but with a different seed value the random number uh, sequences are different
now what we can do to uh, make sure that the seed value is different what we can do we can use the time i mean the current time as a uh, seed value so current time means the whole time stamp uh, including the second value or microsecond value the current time stamp is always different right so current time stamp is always different so that's why the seed value here if we use the time as a seed value it will be always different okay